Good day, this is Mark. I am the one conducting the study titled Practices and Challenges of Filipino Counselors Using Telecounseling Basis for the Development of Telecounseling Training Program. Thank you for participating in the pretest of Telecounseling Training Program. Your participation has been highly valuable in providing information that has contributed to the development of a training program on telecounseling. Without further ado, let's now begin understanding telecounseling, exploring the activities, guides, protocols, strategies, and practices that can help us provide services to our counselees through this method. First of all, telecounseling is not done through email, text messages, or instant messaging. Because aside from the responses not being real-time, it poses a risk to ethical practices as the content may be shared, accessed, or read by others. Telecounseling is also not done through website counseling resources as it is passive, lacking real-time interaction between the counselor and counselee. Telecounseling is not done through virtual reality, artificial intelligence, online gamifications, and social media content. Because aside from lacking direct interaction with the counselor, it is limited in empathy, emotional connection, personalization, cultural sensitivity, complex problem solving, and other counseling micro skills. So telecounseling is a modern form of providing real-time counseling services through a secured video conferencing platform connected with the help of the internet via telephone cables while observing and upholding ethical standards and professional practices. By the end of this online training, we will be able to identify and understand the appropriate activities, guides, practices, protocols, and strategies for conducting before, during, and after telecounseling sessions. Let us proceed with identifying and understanding the appropriate activities, guides, practices, protocols, and strategies for conducting telecounseling sessions beforehand. Ensure a secure and reliable internet connection. Say no to free public Wi-Fi. Avoid connecting to free and public Wi-Fi networks as they are generally less secure, making our telecounseling susceptible to cyber criminals. These networks are often leave your sensitive information more vulnerable and fragile to be breached of confidentiality. Free and public Wi-Fi often lacks encryption, making it more vulnerable to viruses and data leakage. Wired or fiber optics is more stable than Wi-Fi. It is advisable to use internet cables instead of Wi-Fi. Wired internet connectivity is safer from interference and signal fluctuations. Fiber optics are most stable type of internet connection, especially when using telecounseling. Fiber optics, which transmits light waves, travel faster than Wi-Fi, which uses radio waves. Mobile data may provide a more stable internet connection than Wi-Fi, depending on the specific case, area, or situation. Just in case you really need to connect your device to Wi-Fi for a more reliable wireless connection, it is also advisable to be near with your router ensuring better signal strength and avoiding interference and signal fluctuations. To develop techniques to address our counselee's emotions, we can use affirmation validation. To affirm the validity of our counselee's feelings and actions, foster a sense of understanding, acceptance, and encouragement. Responses like, your feelings are valid. It takes courage to express these emotions. I really appreciate your willingness to share your experiences. We can also implore normalization validation. It involves acknowledging and normalizing the emotions a person is experiencing. The purpose is to communicate understanding and reassurance by validating 
that the feelings they are going through are acceptable and reasonable. Responses like, it is okay to feel angry, sad, anxious about this. It is completely normal to feel this emotion in this situation. Your reaction is understandable. To identify the contents of the informed consent, telecounseling, description, and alternative communication plan should be included. It is a good practice that once the counseling has completed the intake assessment form and has paid the expected counseling fee, they will receive meeting details via email. It is also beneficial for the counselee to receive a gentle reminder before the scheduled telecounseling session two hours in advance. In case the video conferencing platform experiences issues, alternative communication should be discussed with the counselee, especially when technical glitches happen during the online counseling session. The session may be rescheduled for a different date and time, and as a last resort, a phone call may be used as long as both parties agree. This provides an opportunity to consider returning to on-site counseling session, especially if video conferencing proves to be frequently unreliable with the counseling. Part of the content of telecounseling before the session is to discuss with the client the development of a treatment plan to serve as a guide in the flow of telecounseling. This includes goal setting, assessment, tracking the progress, providing coping skills, and interventions where the client actively participates. The counselee's camera must be turned on as it is a valuable element in the telecounseling session. If the counselee prefers to have the camera turned off, suggesting an on-site session may be considered. The counselee must ensure that they have sufficient technology to participate in this telecounseling service provision. They should also guarantee that they are in a solo and private space. It is required that fees be settled at least 24 hours before the counseling session. Data encryption is a process where information such as video and audio is converted into a secured code from the sender. It travels through the medium and is then converted back into audio and video when it reaches the end recipient's device. If either the counselor or counselee wishes to record or screenshot the telecounseling session, permission from the one party is required, along with an agreement on the purpose and how it will be secured. To acquire knowledge about appropriate session scheduling, scheduling tool can be used. The counselor can utilize tools such as Google, Zoho, or Outlook calendars. Counselors can also use an actual whiteboard calendar to assess and check their availability and subsequently inquire with the counselee about their availability at the proposed time and date. This ensures effective scheduling and coordination for the telecounseling sessions. Do not forget that when checking the calendar on another screen, device, or the actual calendar on the wall, inform the counselee that you are looking at the schedule or calendar. Suitable day and time. Work collaboratively with the counselee by providing your availability time slot. Consider valuable factors such as their availability, your schedule, their work, or school schedule. If the counselee is a student, it is strategically important to schedule online counseling sessions during, after school, or weekends. Before the end of each telecounseling session, it is advisable to ask the counselee about their availability for the next session. Typically, there is a 5 to 7 day gap between successive sessions. To help the counselee understand the protocols for maintaining session confidentiality, informed consent should be a rule of thumb. As part of the informed consent, it is important to note that we will use a video conferencing platform for counseling, not email, text messages, or any instant messaging applications, as these can be easily shared, screenshotted, and accessed by others. This can be our spill with our client or counselee. 
It is important to understand that our communication information exchange are strictly between you and me. Neither my center nor your employers or school authorities have access to it. To ensure privacy, please make sure you are in a private location during our telecounseling session to prevent unintentional disclosure. For communication, use your personal email address instead of your work or school address or email address and be sure to use a unique password when signing into the platform. Additionally, inform me if you intend to record our session. We both uphold the importance of maintaining confidentiality before, during, and after our telecounseling session. However, there are specific situations where confidentiality may be breached, particularly if it involves someone in imminent danger, if you are facing a life-threatening situation, engaging in self-harm, or if mandated by a court order. Data Privacy Act of 2012. Communicate to the counselee that in our capacity as counselors, we make a record of the discussion during telecounseling sessions with them. This practice is essential for revisiting specific aspects of our conversation to delve deeper into and comprehend their experiences. It is important to note that these records are safeguarded and the counselor is the sole individual will, with access to their office. Following the session, as a counselor, we secure the telecounseling notes on our personal computer using a highly secured password. This practice is essential for revisiting specific aspects of our conversation to delve deeper into and comprehend their experiences. It is important to note that these records are safeguarded and the counselor is the sole individual with access to their office. Following the session, as a counselor, we secure the telecounseling notes on our personal computer using a highly secure password. Let us proceed with identifying and understanding the appropriate activities, guides, practices, protocols, and strategies for conducting telecounseling sessions. To maintain appropriate eye contact and connection with the counselees, look at the camera and screen. Position your camera at the eye level for a natural and direct line of sight. It also provides a more engaging and professional virtual strong and working therapeutic relationship. Inform the counselee that when you look at the screen, you're actively focusing or looking on them. Have a balanced look or gaze between the camera and screen. Consider our hairline and torso visibility. Hairline and torso should be fully visible on screen. It provides a valuable point to establish that sense of openness, genuineness, and transparency with the counselee. Hairline visibility allows the counselor and counselee to observe verbal and nonverbal cues, which enhances communication and understanding. Torso visibility allows the counselor and counselee to observe body language. The counselors can enhance their nonverbal communication by employing appropriate facial expressions. It is essential to adjust one's expressions based on the narrative shared by the counselee. It is important to be sensitive to the specific phases of venting as there are times when a default facial expression may be perfectly fitting depending on the timing. To engage with counselees who often avoid discussing difficult topics, we can employ gradual exploration. After establishing trust, good rapport, and strong and working relationship, one strategy to prevent the counselee from avoiding the discussion of difficult topics is to gradually attempt to ask about various experiential aspects that will eventually lead to the purpose of the questions. This method of gradual exploration prepares the counselee to disclose the complete story of the problem, situation, or tendencies. Open-ended questions. The use of the open-ended question technique is significantly helpful because it prompts and encourages the counselee to express detailed experiences. Its approach 
can encompass the emotions, thoughts, and behaviors faced by the counselee. This method also aids in making the counselee aware of life events by recalling them. To maintain a strong and working therapeutic relationship, observe silence. Giving silence while talking to the counselee provides a safe and supportive space for them to process their emotions and thoughts. The intentional application of the six-second rule pause also allows an opportunity for them to express themselves and process information in their minds. Acknowledge and active listening. Can you share more about is one good example statement to explore with the verbal cues expressed by the counselee. Acknowledging and active listening to the counselee's experiences, emotions, thoughts, and behaviors are significantly helpful in understanding and validating the counselor's counselee. It provides empathy and genuine support to the counselee. Recognizing the counselee-centered approach where the counselor focuses on the unique experiences and needs of the individual. To respond to the verbal cues of our counselees, we can use feedback loop. A regular feedback loop during a telecounseling session is important to ensure that there is a clear understanding and that the session is progressing well. This tool helps in understanding the current state of the counselee, whether they are comfortable, understood, using the same language, or experiencing language barriers that they may lead to misunderstanding and misinterpretation. Seeking feedback from the counselee is also a tool to improve the counselor's communication with them. Exploring emotions. Exploring emotions to respond to the verbal cues of the counselee is an opportunity to better understand the counselee's emotions, feelings, and experiences. Emotions are expressed through verbal cues such as choice of words, tone of voice, and even emojis. To manage situations when someone might harm themselves or be in danger, we can apply creative coding and seek contact information. In instances where the counselee wishes to discuss and identify individuals at home who may pose a danger during telecounseling session, the counselee can be taught to use creative coding. For example, when referring to their father, the counselee may use the name Juan or Teddy Bear. Or for the mother, they might use the name Maria or another alias. It is crucial for the counselee to ensure that the information declared in the intake form or session, as well as emergency contact information of immediate family members or friends who can support the counselee in such situations, is readily available. Safety plan. Outline various procedures and options for the counselee to be aware of and to consider. Identify different options such as option 1, seek a significant person who can accompany the counselee to the emergency room of the nearest hospital in the area. Option 2, seek assistance or go to the nearest barangay hall or police station. Option 3, accompany the counselee with a significant person or immediate family members to a safe location. Advise the counselee to request that whoever accompanies them does not leave them until their tendencies subside. Option 4. Call the crisis hotline and other reliable contact details that provide in-the-moment support for such concerns. Let us proceed with identifying and understanding the appropriate activities, guides, practices, protocols, and strategies for conducting telecounseling sessions after hand. To work with the counselee on relapse prevention, self-monitoring and crisis planning should be included. Self-monitoring is a rewarding aspect of the psychoeducation approach involving tools like identifying triggers and recognizing early warning signs such as increased heart rate or restlessness. Regular self-check-ins are encouraged to facilitate reflection and progress tracking. Self-monitoring assists in determining the necessity of additional mental health support. Crisis planning serves as a guide for knowing that actions to take when symptoms manifest. Hotlines and contact information resources. 
Setting up hotlines at contact information resources is vital for the Council's relapse prevention, often integrated into crisis planning. This list provides immediate support, identifies services available 24-7, offers safe and supportive in-the-moment assistance, and connects the individual with community resources. To communicate with our counselee after telecounseling session, encourage the counselee to use personal email address. Guide and encourage the counselee to use their personal email address to ensure confidentiality in the details, meeting information, and some materials that they may receive from the counselor as part of coping skill interventions and appropriate tools. A personal email is more secure and private compared to work-related or school-related accounts. It is also beneficial to use a single thread of communication in emails for easy tracking or tracing by the counselor or counselee to monitor the communication flow. Disclaimer and confidentiality. The reminder, disclaimer, or confidentiality notice included in the lower part of the email is important. It serves as a reminder that any information contained in the email is intended solely for the designated recipient in accordance with the law. If the recipient or the one forwarded this email is not the intended party, it is mandated to delete it and prohibited to distribute or read it. Counselors are encouraged and advised to maintain thorough documentation of telecounseling sessions, ensuring secure storage with a highly protected password on personal computers. The records should compose of intake sessions, progress notes, case conceptualization, treatment goals, and details of coping skills and techniques used during telecounseling. To address and manage our own fatigue, exhaustion, and burnout, observe regular breaks and varied activities. Consider incorporating regular breaks during the workday for telecounseling sessions. It is possible to insert time gaps between telecounseling sessions to finalize counseling notes, rest, stretch, reflect, and mentally prepare for the next counseling session. Monitor the caseload on a daily, weekly, and monthly basis is also beneficial to ensure the effective management of counselees and oneself. It remains essential to prioritize quality over quantity as part of self-care. Walk the talk. Breathing exercise can reduce stress, anxiety, and aid in mood management. They improve focus and mental clarity by increasing the oxygen supply to the brain, enhancing brain function while promoting relaxation. Art or game activities can help counselors to express and explore their emotion, focus, awareness, and physical and emotional well-being. To address emotional or professional challenges that may arise, seek for a debriefing. If the counselor experiences physical or compassion fatigue, emotional impact, or any undesirable effects after a telecounseling session, do not hesitate to approach a fellow professional to vent out and discuss the critical incident. While protecting confidentiality, debriefing is an appropriate method to provide in-the-moment support, ensuring the counselor a safe and supportive space. Supervision Conduct regular supervision with fellow professionals where the counselor can discuss challenges in telecounseling practice, share insights gained, Seek help to learn additional coping strategies for counselees. This is a crucial way to guide the counselor towards ethical and clinical consideration. We are also advised to attend workshops and training, which play a significant role as they provide sufficient knowledge, skills, and attitude regarding modern trends in mental health practice, especially in telecounseling. To maintain professional boundaries in telecounseling, impose social media boundaries. Refrain from accepting or adding the counselee on any social media platform to maintain a strong and effective therapeutic relationship between the counselor and counselee. 
The effort to avoid this is aimed at preserving the counselor's integrity, professionalism, and adherence to ethical standards. Adding social media poses risk to privacy and professional boundaries, diverting attention from the telecounseling context to personal or social context. Avoid dual relationship. Refrain from non-counseling interactions such as socializing or participating in events with the counselee to safeguard the professional relationship and ethical standards. Clear professional boundaries are essential to maintain the integrity of the counseling process and prevent potential harm. Upholding these boundaries is critical for ensuring the effectiveness and trustworthiness of the counselor counselee relationship. Review Ethical Standards It would be beneficial to visit and review the Code of Ethics to remind oneself about the scope of ethical considerations that need to be upheld between the counselor and counselee. Attending workshops, training, or conventions is also advisable to stay informed about emerging issues in this regard and to acquire sufficient knowledge, skills, and attitude to navigate any unexpected ethical practice challenges. Thank you for attending our online training in telecounseling services provision. These are the references of our online training program. I personally encourage and invite you to answer the post-test. The items in this post-test are similar to the items you answered in the pre-test. This will be used to determine the change in two identical tests to assess the effectiveness of the training program as an intervention. After completing the post-test, please provide feedback based on your experience with the online training. It will help enhance the said online training program. Muli po, thank you for attending our online training in telecounseling services provision.